Welcome to Good Libations, our show about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews, our resident mixologist. And again, we endeavor to make drinks that are never stereotypical. In fact, they may be traditional drinks that have been made for decades, but we always try to put our own flourishes on them. And this is something that all of us should try to do. In fact, I'm hoping when you see episodes of this program, and you see certain cocktails being made, especially if they're traditional drinks, that you make an endeavor to put your own flourish and your own spin on that drink so that you individualize it and make it your own and serve it to your guests and they will know that you're not copying anyone and that no one else makes this particular drink this way. And we're sort of making a, a journey through the Americas, you might say. We started out in South America in Brazil the only Portuguese-speaking country. And we started with cachaça in cocktails, five of them in all, made with cachaça. And of course, there's myriads of other cocktails that you can make with cachaça. And then we went to Mexico and did a different take on the old tequila sunrise, which actually can be a dreadful drink. They were immensely popular as we were talking about earlier today with some of the staff here, with college students in the 60s and 70s, they were your typical Pepsi generation, rather sweet cocktail that's an easy transition from soft drinks to hard liquor. But we made it by muddling the orange so that you're getting the infusion from the peel, you're getting fresh orange juice, you're getting a hint of grenadine, not a bath of it. So you have the color and the beauty of the drink, but it's slightly tartar, especially if you make it with Valencia oranges. And it, again, you don't have to use top shelf tequila to make it a nice cocktail. So doing little things like that can totally redefine a cocktail and make it so much better and make it yours. And this time we're gonna make a cocktail called the Mid-Atlantic Martini. And this is a martini that's kind of an ode to North Carolina, Virginia, especially the community of Virginia Beach, and also South Carolina and Georgia, all your coastal areas around there like Myrtle Beach, Savannah. And this is kind of like a different take on a martini. We know that martini variants have kind of been exhausted, especially in the 90s and in the early 2000s. But this is a little bit different martini variant that I think is quite worthy of making and introducing other people to. So we're gonna go ahead and make it, and it's a vodka martini. It works better with vodka, although those, those of you who are gin aficionados could make it with gin if you wished. And we do use dry vermouth in this drink too, so it is a martini proper. It's not uh, a total spinoff the deep end, we'll put it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and you know fill our cocktail shaker with the appropriate amount of ice. And this is a shaken drink. And of course we've discussed endlessly before the controversy over shaken versus stirred. And those who advocate stirred martinis say that you're upsetting the molecules when you shake the drink, that you should stir it only. And to me, a martini is so much more refreshing and enjoyable if it's shaken rather than stirred. James Bond was right. And sometimes it's nice to use Lillet instead of um, using vermouth, but we're going to go ahead and use vermouth with this. And again, we're going to use a very modest vodka. And vodka martinis are a hair more popular than gin martinis. And there are those who argue, too, that a real martini, as they say, should have gin. But there's nothing wrong with a vodka martini. It's perfectly worthy and perfectly good. And in certain instances, it's better and more accessible with certain blends and liquors than a gin martini. So we're going to add a little bit of vermouth, and I am not of the school where you swish it around in the glass and dump it out. You should add an amount that is not so subtle that you can actually detect that it is in there. Because trust me, you will be able to tell if vermouth is missing from a martini. 
whether it be a conventional martini or a martini variant. And this is again a martini variant. So we're going to put a bit of vermouth in it. Now when I was a, a child and I was one of those precocious kids, I used to make handshake and martinis in Manhattans for my parents. Back in the day, in the 50s and 60s, it was practically a ratio of half and half, half gin, half vermouth, half vodka, half vermouth. Now, things went totally the opposite direction, but maybe a little too much so, because people, again, were just putting it in the glass, swishing it around, and dumping the residue. And unless you have incredibly precise taste buds, you're not going to even detect that much vermouth. We need more than that. So anyway, the other ingredient that goes in this drink is lemon. And not just a lemon twist in the infusion of the peel, but we want to add some actual lemon juice into this particular martini, the Mid-Atlantic. So that is precisely what we have done. And got in a bit of infusion from that peel too. And we're going to go a step farther, like I usually do, and put part of the spent shell in there. Because then those flavors can really marry, and that lemon essence can really get into the drink. Now, mid-Atlantic, because we're going to put a little bit of orange in it, very, very little. And then after this, we're going to put a bit of peach, peach excuse me, in it. Because, as we know, Georgia is the peach state. And in those particular states, that is where originally most of our peaches were grown, although now mostly in California. So we're going to actually squeeze the peach, get some of that pulp in there, and we're going to get the peel of the peach in there, and maybe even a little bit more peach, because. We want the flavor to be subtle, but not so subtle that you don't even know it's there. So we're going to put a bit more in. And then we're going to shake this martini. Ugh. And it would be nice if I put ice in it. <laughs> I need uh, the mistake of not putting enough ice in it, so we want to make sure that we can get a good shake off of this. So the ice is in now, and we're going to shake it. And of course, we're going to use the conventional martini glass for this particular cocktail. And those who say that we're bruising the gin, or in this case, the vodka, forget them. This is not chemistry class. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and pour it in. And as I mentioned, I don't really agree with that philosophy anyway. I want a refreshing martini, not a overly alcohol-laden one, where sure enough there's ice in there, but you're just stirring it. So I think we have enough in the glass now with our mid-Atlantic martini. And very simply, we're just going to put a bit of lemon peel as um, our garnish in here only a bit and that lemon was not very cooperative and I always like to show mulligans and mistakes on my show because things are never gonna go precision perfect I don't care who you are I don't care how many years of experience that you've had making cocktails things are not gonna go perfect sometimes ice is gonna get spilled sometimes you're gonna look ungainly when you bend over to try to pick up the ice Sometimes things don't cut correctly. Sometimes you break glasses. It happens to the best. But at any rate, I'm going to give a taste of this and see if this is a worthy cocktail, as I hope it is. Oh, yes, that is very nice. Very, very nice. And the ripe peach uh, adds just a little bit of residual sugar. Now, some might want to add either homemade simple syrup or sugar to this but I prefer it as it is. That is so refreshing and good and so different. Mid-Atlantic Martini. And as I always say at the end of my programs, thank you for tuning in to Good Libations and let's always be sensible 
about our alcohol consumption. Let's always be careful. Thank you again. I'm Ethel Andrews. Goodbye.